All right, we're on to the next step now. We're gonna be installing the rod bearings and aligning the piston rings to the correct orientation and then installing them in the block. So stay tuned. All right, so first I'm gonna take this cap off. We're gonna install the rod bearings, clean everything up, align the rings in the correct orientation. And then we're gonna use our, there's a ring compressor, but it's like a cone shape. So as I slide the piston, it's gonna compress these rings. So I'm gonna show you how this is all done. First of all, I'm just gonna get it nice and clean. Spray it off one last time. It's all clean, everything's right. Usually all the rings just freely move. You can just pretty much shake and they should move in the grooves. So that's all good. This down. These are dowel uh, connecting rods, so they're a lot harder to get apart. Here's dowels. Some of the newer ones are just like breakaway ones, so you only can put them on a certain way and they line up perfect, but a lot of the high performance rods have the dowels in them. So a new set of standard connecting rod bearings, crankshaft and connecting rods all checked okay. I'll put this off in the package. Looks like I got a damaged bearing, something. Two of them rubbed each other and it looks like it scratched it. I have to double check to see if that, if it's just indented, it should be fine, but if it's raised, then I'm gonna have to clean that off before I install it. So I'll be right back. All right, back. I went through this bearing. I just made sure that there was no raised edge on that damage there, and it's really smooth, so this bearing will end up being fine. If it's raised you definitely can't use it but if it's indented and it you know you can't catch your like you'll catch your finger on it but you gotta make sure it's not raised because with the indent it'll only hold more oil there um, otherwise as long as it's smooth it's not going to grab on anything you should be good to go so i'm gonna go ahead and continue installing these so Install one half in this side. Sometimes you can get little burrs when you push them in, so I always try to make sure I, I use a blow gun to blow those off. So that part's good. I'm gonna get the installer out. I highly recommend getting this style of piston ring installer. We get to buy the exact size for your bore. This is an 85 millimeter, which is the size of my pistons. So it's tapered. So as it goes down, it gets smaller. So you get this nice and lubed up here, get the piston set in there, and it'll slide right into the block. Instead of having to use the older style where you have to like clamp around the piston and tighten it up, 
this is a way easier and faster solution that has less chance of damaging anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this all down. I'm also gonna wipe the bore out that I'm gonna be installing the sensor cylinder one. This all cleaned out. I'm gonna get a nice fresh air. The next step, this is directly from CP. They want you to put the top ring gap opening on the exhaust side of the engine. This is the front, that's the wrist pin there. So I'm gonna put the top ring gap here, the second ring gap's 180 degrees off, and then it wants the top oil ring gap and the bottom oil ring gap's right there. So I'm gonna do this on this piston, I'm gonna lubricate it, and then we're gonna put in the engine. So these are the, the reliefs are bigger on the intake side. These are smaller, so this is the exhaust side. So it wants the top ring, which is this one here, wants that ring gap on the exhaust side. So we got that ring gap here, intakes over here, so we got the gap here. And then uh, the second ring, we need to have the gap on the intake side. Spin that all the way around. All right, so that one's over there. So we got this gap here, that gap there. If you get both those gaps on top of each other, it's gonna lower the compression of the motor and you might have some issues. So make sure you get those lined up. And then I'm gonna grab a pick. These little ones are a little harder to move around, but it wants the top oil gap there and the bottom one over here. So I'm gonna do that next. Find this gap first. Cool. All right, so we got the top oil ring gap right here. The bottom one's right here. This one happened to be pretty close to lined up. I'm just going to move that one over just a little bit. All right, so that gap's there, that gap's there. Second ring gap is on the intake side. The first ring gap is on the exhaust side here. So everything's lined up. Should be ready to go. Installing this into the engine. Make sure everything is all lubed up still. Make it a little easier. We'll put the assembly lube on that uh, this bearing also. That's its own client that I'm just gonna do this side too. All right, 
right, so slide this through here. This one's gonna go inside here. Ring gaps are still lined up where they should be. All I have to do is start sliding this into here. Oh, that's not good. Pop the ring there. All right, there we go. Bring this over here so you can get an idea of what's going on. I usually just get the skirt out of the cup here. So when you set it into the engine, just be real careful you don't have the rod hitting the cylinder walls. Piston lines up there. Give this a push. That didn't work. Let's try it again. All right, it's gonna do this a little quicker push this time. Yeah, right in. I'm gonna push this all the way down till the connecting rod's onto the crankshaft. I already had this aligned previously because I knew this journal was all at the bottom like that. So I can just put the other rod cap on here, tighten it up. Cylinder one is done then. As with all ARP stuff, you gotta lubricate all the threads so they torque to the proper specs. Doesn't hurt if you have too much, and then I'm also gonna put a little bit on here so that the head of the bolt doesn't get caught on that. Slowly put these on. Torque spec is 43 foot pounds, so I'm gonna go get my torque wrench and get those tight. I'm just gonna do a seating torque about 15. I'm gonna go up to 45, or 43. All right, cylinder one's done. It rotates nice and freely. Go 
on to cylinder two, I'm gonna put that at the bottom. It's all clean. I'm gonna continue the process for the rest of these. So stay tuned. So that about does it for this episode. Just a quick overview of uh, how everything looks all together. All installed, lubricated, rings are all aligned. The bottom side, it's torqued and ready to go. Usually this part is one of the most critical parts. The rest of it's more just uh, assembling everything. So uh, stay tuned for some more videos coming up. Please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you on the next one. Thank you.